Hello and welcome you watching Ratsala TV. I'm Rajat Keen. Let's have a look at the top headlines this evening. Campaigning to end for the sixth phase of UP elections on Thursday. 49 assembly seats in this phase spread across seven districts to go on polls on March 4th. At a poll rally in UP's Maharaj Ganj district, Prime Minister Narendra Modi takes the bigger economist who criticized the note ban, saying his country has seen difference between Harvard and hard work. Raj Sabha member Haji Abdul Salam passes away after brief illness. Salam was the first Muslim member of the upper house from Manipur since 2014. And US President Donald Trump indicates softening of stance on tough immigration rules in his first address to the Joint Assembly of Congress, calls for support on initiating reforms. And now let's now get you the latest from the ongoing assembly elections in Rodic 2017. Campaigning for the sixth phase of Uttar Pradesh Assembly elections for 49 assembly seats spread across seven districts will end on Thursday. Campaigning will come to a close at 5 p.m. Polling will take place on March 4th. Public attention will be focused on Gorakhpur, the Lok Sabha constituency of BJP leader Yogi Adityanath, and Azamgarh, the Lok Sabha constituency of Samajwadi Party patron Mulayam Singh Yadav. In this phase, the penultimate of the seventh phase exercise will also cover districts bordering Nepal. Around 1.72 crore voters, including 94.6 lakh male and 77.8 lakh female, are eligible to decide the fate of 635 candidates. Other districts going to poll in this phase are Mau, Maharaj Ganj, Khushinagar, Devaria, and Balia. As the crucial Uttar Pradesh battle draws to a close, the two more of the seven phases of the voting left, Prime Minister Narendra Modi today mocked the opposition parties for opposing the centre's demonetization drive. He also slammed Akhilesh government for allegedly failing to provide basic amenities, including houses, to people of the state. A day after the latest GDP data showed that the note ban did not affect the economic growth rate, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday praised his government's decision to demonetize the 500 and 1000 rupee notes. Modi took a dig at Nobel laureate Amartya Sen, saying that hard work mattered more than Harvard. Sen had called demonetization a despotic action that had struck at the root of the economy based on trust. Harvard भाइयो बहनो हिंदुस्तान दुनिया की सबसे तेज गति से आगे बढ़ने वाली इकॉनमी में उसने अपना नाम दर्ज करा दिया है कल जीडीपी के आंकड़े आए उन्होंने फिर से सिद्ध कर दिया इन देवरिया द प्राइम मिनिस्टर टारगेटेड द कांग्रेस समाजवादी पार्टी अलायंस he said while one specialized in economically ruining the country the other was an expert in politically destroying uttar pradesh एक को सफाई में रस है, दूसरों हाथ को हाथ की सफाई में रस है। ये सफाई वालों से और हाथ की सफाई वालों से उत्तर प्रदेश को बचाना है कि नहीं बचाना है? और इसलिए भाइयों बहनों, आपको जान करके खुशी होगी, गुजरात के कंडला से ढाई हजार किलोमीटर से ज़्यादा पाइपलाइन लगा रहे हैं पाइपलाइन उस पाइपलाइन से गैस आएगा मोदी आल्सो एक्सप्रेस्ड कॉन्फिडेंस इन विनिंग द असेंबली इलेक्शंस ही प्रॉमिस्ड टू फुलफिल द एस्पिरेशंस ऑफ द पुअर विदाउट डिस्क्रिमिनेटिंग ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ कास्ट और रिलिजन सिक्स्थ फेज ऑफ इलेक्शंस इन द स्टेट आर स्केड्यूल्ड ऑन मार्च 4th ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट राज्यसभा टेलीविजन कैंपेनिंग फॉर द 6th assembly sixth phase of the assembly elections in up has reached its peak bsp supreme mayawati today said bjp is misleading the people of uttar pradesh in the name of demonetization while hitting back at prime minister modi at a rally in sonbhadra 
She said BJP is now being called the Bharatiya Jumla Party. She continued to warn voters that if BJP comes to power, all reservations will go away. BSP chief also blamed the ruling Samaj of the party for adopting several BSP's policies and schemes and taking credit for the same. She also urged the people of the state to vote for a party for development and the crime-free state. जो मेरे किसान भाई हैं, उनसे भी मैं पूछना चाहती हूँ क्या इन पौने तीन वर्षों में किसी भी एक किसान का एक रुपा एक रुपए का भी कर्ज माफ हुआ है? मैं समझती हूँ नहीं हुआ है। और अब इनके और अब इनके ये दोनों मुख्य चुनावी वायदे भी या अन्य वायदों की तरह ही केवल हवा हवाई वे कोरे जुमले बाजी ही बनकर रह गए हैं जिसकी वजह से अब लोग पूरे देश में भारतीय जनता पार्टी को यहाँ भारतीय जुमला पार्टी भी कहने लगे हैं जो काम कम और जुमले बाजी ही ज्यादा करती है As the campaign for final two phases in UP reaches a feverish pitch, SP and Congress Alliance is going all out to woo the voters. Addressing one rally after the other in Devaria and Mau, Akhilesh Yadav tried to corner both the BJP and BSP. Taking a dig at Prime Minister Modi, Akhilesh said that he has no hopes of winning and that is why he is talking of a fractured mandate and coalition. Akhilesh said the BJP and BSP are scared of the SP Congress Alliance in the state. Rahul Gandhi too called Prime Minister Modi anti-farmer at a public rally in Kushinagar. He said Prime Minister has been making false promises to the people of Uttar Pradesh. I have explained them many times and then I am explaining them that these two people are not the two people. These are the two people of the nation. The people of the nation and the people of the nation have the two people of the nation. What do you want to do? युवा का भविष्य ना रखे, उनके लिए भविष्य ना छूटे ना रहे, ये कारण हुआ, दो कारण हुआ, दो कारण हुआ, वाले सुने, नरेंद्र मोदी की सिर्फ भविष्यता के सबसे अहम पदार्थ में लगा रखे थे। there are 10 assembly seats in Azamgarh. In 2012, Samaj of the Party had won 9 of them, while 10th went to Bahujan Samaj Party. In 2014 Lok Sabha elections too, Azamgarh sent then SP chief Malayam Singh Yadav to the parliament. But can the party repeat its performance in 2017? Will the minority vote back Samaj of the Party this time too? Aspect correspondent Sham Sundar finds out. Amir Rashadi Madni runs a madarsa and college in Azamgarh. In 2011, he formed the Rashtriya Lema Council and even fought the Lok Sabha elections in 2014. But this time, the party has put its weight behind Mayavati's Bahujan Samaj Party. Look, I'm going to tell you, 403 seats. Let's start with number 1, 403 Roberts Gunt. Every seat on Bahujan Samaj Party has increased by 5-10 years. The leadership of the Dalit leadership was finished. साजिश रची गई थी उस साजिश को भी हमने नाकाम कर दिया इसलिए कि कोई अपोजिशन नहीं रह जाता और मैं समझता हूं कि मायावती जी जैसा एक अपोजिशन लीडर यहां पर होना चाहिए इन तीनों के मुकाबले में दोनों मतलब तीनों कह लीजिए RUC's support to BSP is just a signal of the seemingly waning Muslim support for the ruling Samajwadi party. There is an undercurrent of an increasing disillusionment especially among the youth although there are voices of support too. इस अपील का फर्क किसी को पर कुछ नहीं पड़ेगा क्योंकि ये आदमी अपने दिल की सुनता है किसी और के नहीं सुनता है इसलिए जैसे मैं भी हूँ सपा का सपोर्टर हूँ तो मैं उनसे ये कहना चाहूँगा आखिर जाते हुए से कि हमें मोबाइल और लैपटॉप नहीं चाहिए हमें रोजगार चाहिए हमें रोजगार दे दो हम मोबाइल और विकास और ये यूनिवर्सिटी यूनिवर्सिटी के लिए मांग करते हैं हम लोग हम लोग के यही चाहिए स्टूडेंट हैं हम लोग पढ़ाई करना चाहते हैं हम लोग पढ़े हम लोग के यही चाहिए बस और कुछ नहीं आप करें बसपा कैसे जीते उसका भी कारण है बाहन जी बाहन जी की सरकार थी एक भी भर्ती बता दीजिए कोर्ट में रुकी थी आप बता दीजिए बता दीजिए एक एक भी भर्ती रुकी थी With two days to go for elections in Azamgarh, if the BSP tries a little harder, it can definitely make a dent in the SP's vote base. As of now, it seems that Samajwadi Party's traditional vote bank, that is Yadav and Muslim, is intact and backing the party in this election. But Bahujan Samaj Party is working tirelessly to make a division in Muslim votes. And if it happens, it will be a difficult election for Samajwadi Party and can even help 
Bharatiya Janata Party to open its account in Azamgarh district. With cameraman Anirban, this is Sham Sundar, Rajya Sabha TV, Azamgarh. Joining us live from Azamgarh, Sham Sundar and from Manipur, Akhilesh Suman. First to you, Sham. Uh, it's a high-stake battle for Samajali Party in Azamgarh. Is the party confident of repeating its performance of 2012 and its subsequent performance in 2014 where Mulayam Singh Yadav had won his parliamentary seat? Well, if you see uh, at the record of Samajwadi Party, Samajwadi, Samajwadi Party has done well in Azamgarh in 2012 and 2014, as we have told our audience in the report also. But uh, if we talk in this elections, uh, of course, uh, Samajwadi Party looks very confident. Sam uh, uh, Akhilesh Yadav, he claims that he has done uh, uh, numerous uh, development works in uh, Azamgarh and uh, other districts of uh, Purvanchal, like uh, uh, if you talk uh, Atrolia, uh, a, a constituency in uh, Azamgarh, there is, there is a new hospital with 100 beds, and uh, there are uh, pol new police vans and uh, new ambul ambulances. Uh, you can see roads are improved, power supply is improved. But uh, uh, when we talk the minority uh, uh, population, they still they, they are with the uh, Samajwadi party. Of, uh, so, uh, uh, though there is uh, some kind of illusment, uh, disillusionment uh, with the uh, 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 Samajwadi party, but still they, they right. say that uh, they are going to Samaj, uh, support right. Samajwadi party, but they have few complaints, few issues uh, which they want the Samajwadi party, uh, that they, the, those issues should be addressed. And uh, if we talk about Bhajan Samaj party, Bhajan Samaj party has done a, a good homework as far as ticket distribution is con uh, concerned. So, uh, Bhajan Samaj party is giving a tough time in Purvanchal uh, to uh, Samajwadi party and especially in Azamgarh. Right, Sham, just one more thing. Our voters also considerate about feud in Samajwadi party. Is that also playing a factor in this stronghold of Samajwadi party? Sham, I was asking, are the voters, will the feud within Samajwadi party that had played before the elections, will it have any impact on the mind of voters? Right, there seems to be some problem in getting connected with Sham Sundar. Off to the other state. Now, with just two days left for elections in Manipur, PRJA party convener Erom Sharmila is working hard to reach out to the voters and voice her agenda as a new politician. Main is repealing the armed forces special powers for which I had been struggling for the last 16 years through nasal feeding. We are, um, others also there are lots of issues to be um, fighting against um, injustice in the society um, through political power. On a two-day visit to Kolba on Manipur, BJP President Amit Shah addressed election rallies in Imphal West area and the Naga-dominated Ukhrul region. He blamed the ruling Congress party, state government, for not finding solution to the economic blockade in the state since November last year. He also charged it with sheltering extremist group for political benefits. Shah promised a blockade-free Manipur and said BJP will not compromise in the state boundary talks with NSC and IM. नरेंद्र मोदी जी की सरकार है अगर यहां पर भी एक सरकार पूर्ण बहुमत की भारतीय जनता पार्टी की बनती है तो मैं आपको कहना चाहता हूं हम पांच ही साल में मणिपुर को एक मॉडल स्टेट बनाकर दिखाएंगे मित्रों मॉडल स्टेट जॉइनिंग अस फॉर मोर वी हैव अखिलेश सुमन अखिलेश थैंक्स फॉर जॉइनिंग अस यू बीन कैंपिंग इन मणिपुर फॉर क्वाइट अ वाइल now, besides uh, the presence of Irom Sharmila, what else will be a big challenge for Congress party? Yeah, big challenge for Congress party is not only Irom Sharmila. Irom Sharmila is uh, basically a moral force uh, that is uh, 
still giving, showing mirror to the people of the state and also to the government in the state and the center. Our only two point demand is that Armed Forces Special Power Act should be repealed and another that corruption free state should be made so that development can take place in Manipur because he thinks that Manipur is a neglected state. So this is posing challenge to both BJP and Congress and both are seeing their mirror in this, uh, in this situation. But other than that, you know, BJP is uh, putting a brave face and not only a brave face, BJP is trying hard so that Congress can be uh, defeated. And it is not just in hollow. BJP is promising all sorts, right from moon to sun. And it is telling that if within the uh, last uh, 15 years or so, uh, Congress party has virtually uh, did no development in the state. And if you see, there is some sort of truth also that a state infrastructure is in very poor state. And also that... Uh, uh, the employment situation is very bad. Even when you will see that even you go to the villages, people will speak to you in English. English education is very prevalent here right. and people are intelligent. So blame goes to Congress party indeed and there is no doubt about it. But Congress party has put such a big line before BJP that, uh, that there is a threat of disintegration. And now if you go to BJP office, you will see that BJP is for integrated and prosperous state. So, so BJP is trying to play what Congress is posing to before it. So Congress right. still is in having the upper hand, but BJP is moving all around the state and trying to ensure the people that if BJP comes to power, development will be the main agenda. And given the fact that it is the international boundary with Myanmar, it has a much more advantage than any other state. And right. even they are promising that even though BUP is the biggest state in the uh, country, Manipur uh, being a small state, if BJP gives importance equally as UP. So it, it, BJP is the big challenge indeed. And right. today what happened that uh, one uh, student organization, KSA, and that is associated with the Maitai community, they went and attacked the BJP office and BJP leaders went to uh, election commission office and they pointed finger against the Congress. So this type of things are happening. Right. So you don't know that uh, who is doing what, but situation is quite vibrant here. And right. Naga is still is uh, working in the mind of people. So right. challenge is both before the Congress as far as no development is concerned and with the BAP that the Naga issue is uh, important for uh, anyone other than Naga in the state. Right, right. right. Thanks, Akhilesh, for an interesting battle on the cards in the northeastern state whether Congress would be able to hold its fort or will BJP be able to expand its foothold in the Northeast. Off to the other story, there has been an improvement in two key health indicators, sex ratio and the birth and at birth and infant mortality rate. During 2015-16, the National Family Health Survey unveiled by Union Health Ministry was conducting after collecting information from 6 lakh households and 7 lakh women and 1.3 lakh men. This is first such survey that provides district level estimates. Infant mortality rate or IMR declined from 57 to 41 per 1,000 live births between 2005-2006 and the latest survey. IMR has declined substantially in almost all the states in the last decade. In Tripura, West Bengal, Jharkhand, Arunachal Pradesh, Rajasthan and Odisha, it dropped by more than 20%. Sex ratio at birth has improved from 914 to 919 at the national level, with the highest in Kerala, followed by Meghalaya and Chhattisgarh. Haryana also witnessed a significant increase from 762 to 836. The Union Health Ministry says the result of the surveys reflect the concerted effort and focused intervention has helped improve the outcomes. बहुत अच्छी पहले प्रधानमंत्री जी की इस विषय को लेकर के महिलाओं के और बच्चियों के विषय को लेकर के चाहे वो जन्मदर का विषय हो और चाहे ये जो असमानता है लिंगानुपात का है इसमें भी बहुत बड़ा चेंजेस आया है चेंज होना चाहिए हमें अपने आप को अपने लोगों को अपने आसपास के लोगों को ट्रेन रीट्रेन करना चाहिए कि बच्चा बच्चा है वो लड़का है लड़की इट डज नॉट मैटर दूसरा लेजिस्लेशन हैज टू बी वेरी स्ट्रांग लेट्स हैव अ लुक एट व्हाट एल्स इज मेकिंग न्यूज़ अक्रॉस द कंट्री इन नेशन वाइड Raj Sabh member Haji Abdul Salam passed away after brief illness on Tuesday night. The 69-year-old was a lone Muslim Raj Sabha member from the state. He has represented the state in Upper House since 2014.
cents has gained over 241 points to end about six months high of 28,985 points today after the India's GDP figures showed 7% growth for December quarter. Nifty 2 gained nearly 1% today, recovering from the two days of losses and ending a few points below its key psychological level of 8,950 marks. Jammu Srinagar National Highway remained closed for the second consecutive day today after a massive landslide in Ramban district of Jammu and Kashmir washed away a portion of the road. Several commuters are stranded on the highway even as clearing operations are underway. Delhi High Court has dismissed Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal's plea seeking details of financial records of Finance Minister Arun Jaitley who has filed a defamation suit against him. The High Court said that Kejriwal's plea which also sought bank statements of Jaitley's family members was fishing or roving inquiry which did not have any merit. The Indian Meteorological Department has predicted above normal temperatures across the country for the summer season ahead. Several states are likely to witness heat wave conditions with the northwest region of the country to be worst affected. The heat wave conditions are likely to, to be over the core heat wave zone, which include Punjab, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Delhi, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Gujarat, and Madhya Pradesh. U.S. President Donald Trump addressed the U.S. Congress for the first time since its swearing in as president in January. Softening his stand on the harsh immigration policies, he called for adopting a merit-based immigration system. In his address, Trump also said that he has inherited a very bad economy where, nine, where 94 million Americans are out of labor force. Of the United States. <laughs> Indicating a climb down, U.S. President Donald Trump on Wednesday said he's open to immigration reform. In his first address to the joint session of Congress on Tuesday, Trump appealed to Republicans and Democrats to work together on the issue. He called for a merit-based immigration system to help create jobs and raise workers' wages. Switching away from this current system of lower-skilled immigration and instead adopting a merit-based system we will have so many more benefits. It will save countless dollars, raise workers' wages, and help struggling families, including immigrant families, enter the middle class. And they will do it quickly. And they will be very, very happy indeed. Promising to revive the American spirit, Trump said his administration is working on improved vetting procedures and said the United States can't be allowed to become a sanctuary for extremists. Those given the high honor of admission to the United States should support this country and love its people and its values. We cannot allow a beachhead of terrorism to form inside America. We cannot allow our nation to become a sanctuary for extremists. Trump also promised to repeal and replace Obamacare with an improved health plan. We should help Americans purchase their own coverage through the use of tax credits and expanded health savings accounts. But it must be the plan they want, not the plan forced on them by our government. The time has come to give Americans the freedom to purchase health insurance across state lines. The U.S. President also promised to send to Congress a budget to rebuild the nation's military, billing it as one of the largest ever increases in defense spending. He also condemned last week's fatal Kansas bar shooting in which an Indian engineer was killed. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha Television. Let's have a look at what else is making news across the world in Global Bus. An Indonesian and Vietnamese suspects were produced in Malaysian court over the killing of Kim Jong Nam, the estranged half-brother of North Korean leader Kim Jong Un. Both are charged with murder. Interestingly, the two suspects were made to wear bulletproof vest as authorities fear that others involved in the killing would want them silenced. King Jong Nam, who, has, who had criticized the regime of his family and his half-brother King Jong Un, was killed after two women allegedly smeared the external agent across the space at Kuala Lumpur Airport. Russia and China have vetoed new UN sanctions in Syria over the use of chemical weapons. The US Ambassador Nikki Haley accused both the countries of refusing to hold President Bashar al-Assad's regime accountable for the use of chemical weapons. The, defeat, the defeated resolution was drafted over after a joint investigation by UN and International Chemical Weapons Watchdog. 
It said Syrian government was behind at least three attacks involving chlorine gas and ISIS was responsible for at least one involving mustard gas. US-backed Iraqi forces are battling their way to, to within firing range of Mosul's main government buildings. Several thousand militants, including many who traveled from Western countries to join up, are believed to be in Mosul among the remaining civilian population, estimating at the start of offensive at 7,50,000. The militants are using mortars, sniper fire, bobby traps, and suicide car bombers against Iraqi forces. Afghan Taliban militants attacked police, military and intelligence targets in Kabul into separate suicide attacks, killing at least one and injuring dozens of people. A suicide car bomber attacked at the gates of the police station in the western part of Kabul. Meanwhile, second suicide bomber on foot carried out another attack in eastern Kabul, targeting an office of National Intelligence Service. The Taliban has claimed responsibility for both the attacks. After the sports, ahead of the second test match against Australia and Bengaluru, India is looking to start afresh. The host team had lost the opener in Pune very poorly. However, the team is now confident of putting a better show in Bengaluru. Uh, we're looking forward uh, for this game and uh, start fresh and uh, put the pressure back on the Australians. So I think uh, it's, it's going to be a good challenge for us as a team and we're going to test our character. So now um, that's what we are playing cricket for and hopefully we can. Uh, we can uh, play the way we have to play and we have played before. So. In the last match, Team India were outplayed in every department of the game and they were also wasteful while using the decision review system, something that they will have to use judiciously this time. Out of seven DRS referrals, they got only one right. The top two test teams in the world will lock horns on a Bengaluru pitch, turned as sporting by the organizers on Saturday. And that's it for now. Keep watching Rajasabha TV for more international and national news.